welcome to Chair Interval Training brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and Yellow Springs Senior Center and me, Lynn Hardman. I just happen to be a Silver Sneakers Flex instructor, but you don't need silver sneakers or anything other than a great attitude and perhaps a sturdy chair, a rubber ball and some rubber tubing if you have it for today's workout. Get some water, make sure you've got a space that's free and clear of anything you might trip or slip on and do wear some sturdy appropriate shoes that are comfortable for you while we move together hey but before we do remember it's always a great idea to consult your physician before you begin any new activity or exercise program and while we're talking about seeing your doctor or your your health care provider february is heart health month and dental health month so i want to remind you that those two things are really important to just have your regular wellness checkups and your regular tooth cleaning and perhaps your eyes checked and your feet as well um you know we've all been thinking about vaccines and and the coronavirus yes that's of utmost importance as is all of the safety and preventative health care that we should focus on but Please don't neglect your regular wellness checkups, heart and teeth this month. Put it on your list. Okay, right now. Oh, if you feel out of balance or dizzy at any time, you can remain or return to your chair and you'll still get a great heart workout. And hopefully you'll smile and I can see your beautiful clean teeth. All right, I've got some music. So you get to decide whether you want to be seated with your best posture and your best attitude or standing. Remember, you could change your mind whenever you feel you're, you need to, you're right. Okay, got some music at an appropriate rate to get our heart going gradually with our warm up. If we were on a scale of one to 10 with our intensity right now, we probably are at a one or a two. That's the lowest end of it. So we don't want to be at a nine or 10. So we're going to shoot for a gradual increase in heart rate and mobility and intensity to reach a target zone of say a four to no more than an eight with our aerobic activity. That's our heart health. Okay, let's go. We're going to do intervals. You could be moving in your seat or on your feet, but always be within reach of your chair so that you can see it with your peripheral vision and touch it without even looking down. But it's okay to look down if you need. But keep your best posture, whether you're seated or standing, as you just march it out or tap your toes or move however suits you today. I would love to be in your company in person, but I'm counting on you to listen to your own body. I can't see you. So if you feel like a, a movement isn't working for you, you're right. You can just reduce the range of motion, go back to another movement that you know suits you today, and every day is different. Or you can just take a little break and join back in when you're ready. Okay, so just sitting tall and breathing is a great exercise. Sometimes, just by getting into our best posture, ears over shoulders, over hips, and if you're seated, knees over toes or ankles, it improves our mood just as it does when we begin to get our circulation going, getting that fresh oxygen to our brain and all of our muscles. So good for us. So let's do it. Marching with this cross crawl pattern or arms opposite of legs is a really good thing. While we're doing that, I'm gonna try different speeds and introduce a pattern that we'll use later on. We always work on the ABCs, agility, balance, coordination, plus strength and flexibility. And we'll take time to relax at the end. So here we go. When we're marching at the music's tempo, it's just looking like this. What if we slow it down and march and lift one foot off of the floor and balance just for a little longer? 
trying not to lean too much. We've got our chair if we need it. Now we're actually doing a little slow march or a knee lift. Let's apply a pattern to it called single, single, double. You've done that with me before, if you've done this before. But some of us are new to this game, so let's try it. It's single, single, now two on one side. Single, single, double. And on that double, of course, we're balancing twice as long, so we might need our chair, or we might need to tap our toe down. All of that is perfect. If you never feel challenged, if you never feel wobbly while we're doing this, well then we need to move you up to a tougher pattern, maybe a double, 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 and then fours, four, three, two, and do it again, double, double, pull that navel in, and then four, three, two, you got it, just march it out or shake a leg, starting to feel that on the tops of your thighs. When you do that, sometimes you gotta take a break and change it up. You know how you're feeling, and so trust your body if you're right. So that's one of the patterns that we use for balance, and we'll play a brain game with it too when we get to fours. So I wanna tell you right now, later on, think of things that come in fours and make a list. It'll be a lot harder when we're trying to balance. <laughs> But that's the whole point, is we're challenging our brain while we're moving, and research shows this improves neuroplasticity. Your brain is the most dynamic organ in your body for your entire life, if we take good care of it. Okay, so we're gonna work also on agility. That's the ability to move our feet fast. And today we're gonna do some step patterns, and then if we get to it, it's some step touch patterns. Let's get our right foot marching right, 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 left, right. Now let's slow it down and build a pattern. Right, left, right, left. We're marching in place. Let's describe the letter V with our right foot going forward, then our left, and then coming back to the base of that letter V. You can use your arms or not to describe the letter V. We're always leading with our right. Let's try it at tempo, a little faster. Good. This is our V step pattern. And we're leading always with our right. We could even, if we bring our arms in a little bit and we know our chair is there, we could even go a little bit faster. But we're just warming up, so we don't wanna to go too fast. So we'll do the letter V and the letter X with our feet and maybe with our arms and we'll go at our desired speed. But before we do anything else, I want to get our legs a little bit stretched out. This is hard to do in the chair, but if you scooch over to the right side of your chair and walk your right heel back just a little, pasting it on the ground, keeping the heel to the ground, lean forward for a gentle calf stretch. Pull up to the ball of the foot, maybe stretch up into a tall di diagonal, then replace that heel on the ground, and lean forward a little bit more. Pull up to the ball of the foot. Now get your shoulders right on top of your hips, and tuck your tailbone in, curling your spine, and then inhale and open. Got your chair there. If your balance is super rock steady, you could take it to both arms. Good. So we got a little calf stretch, a little hip flexor stretch, and a little spine stretch. Let's do that on the left side. If you're seated, scoot your body over slightly to the left side, and just gradually work that left leg back, whether you're standing or seated, to a place where you can pace the heel on the ground and lean forward. Shoulders and nose get ahead of our hips in this diagonal pose. Stretch up to the ball of the foot, squeeze your calf muscle on that left leg, and then gradually relax and pace the heel on the ground again, leaning a little further forward if it feels good. Now pull up to the ball of that rear, that left foot, and bring your shoulders right on top of your hips. Got your chair for your balance check? Good. We're going to dip down and tuck that tailbone under. 
and then open it back. So we're inhaling, opening our chest, exhaling, and closing. Moving the spine gradually, gently, do a full sink, comfortable range of motion, just to get ready for more. And if your balance is rock steady, there you are. Okay, we're gonna continue to work in the chair. And don't forget, when we do our balance routine, you'll need a couple lists of four things, things that come in four. Before you get seated, touch your chair physically with your heels or your lower legs, so that as you come to your chair, weight even in both feet, head staying up, as if you got an imaginary glass of water there. That if you lost your balance or your knee or your hip gave out, you're right there safely planted in your chair. By the way, when we're seated, that's the best time to get a sip of water. So when you do get things down low on the ground, Step to the side, lean to the side. Brace with your strong abdominals and your arm, and do it mindfully, slowly. Nobody anywhere ever said, oh, I, I got hurt because I was going way too slow. Well, maybe somebody did that sometime, but most injuries occur when we're rushing. So here's to being mindful and gradual with our exercise today. While we're seated, let's come to the edge of our chair so we can move freely through our hips and our shoulders and our wrists and our ankles. All right, first, let's just place our heels of our hands on our lap, sitting tall, knees over ankles, and tap your toes. Tap your fingers on your lap, pulling those toes up off the floor to warm up your shins. Then take them out and in. And if you want to lift your hands up off of your lap, you can do that. Focusing on your shoulders rotating a little. Maybe you want to slow it down. Notice it's always easier to inhale when you're opening your chest and exhale when you're closing. Good. All right. Do a little cat curl there. Push, curl your spine. Inhale, open. Ah, that felt good. All right, now sitting tall, let's stretch out our right leg and our left. Excellent. We're going slow enough that if you like, you could squeeze those long, strong thigh muscles, the quadriceps, and show me the sole of your sturdy, appropriate footwear. And then push with the opposite hand. Keep the crown of the head stretching up to the sky. Breathe. Brace with those abdominals. And we're going slow enough. Let's try a little bit of a circle with our hand and our foot. Good. Other side. I kind of slowed down there on you, didn't I? Circle. Two, three, four, four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get a stretch on that right leg. Sitting tall, supporting on the left lap. Keep the spine long. That's when it's strongest and safest. Stretch the crown of your head up on a diagonal. Lift your toes and your fingers up, up, up. Ah, and then push like you're pushing an accelerator, but remember, don't go too fast, especially when it's snowy outside. And sit tall. Let's pull that navel in towards the spine. Pull the knee gently toward the chest and circle the ankle again. One direction and then the other. All right. Well, we've had a pretty mild winter thus far. Stretch out that left leg. Sit tall. Breathe in. But this is the time of year we want to be mindful about wearing appropriate clothes outside, especially when there's slippery surfaces. Lift the toes of the fingers, and then push like you're pushing a pedal down. And then sit tall, pulling the navel in as if you're zipping up tight snow pants. Draw the knee towards the chest. And then draw big flowy circles with your ankle, one direction, and then the other. 
Personally, I'm a fan of using uh, ski poles and you can put different things on the bottom to give you traction so that you always have at least two points on the ground, sometimes three. And also it gives you better traction and better balance and support uh, and posture when we learn to do that correctly. If you haven't done that outside before, you probably want to practice inside, but not with that sharp ski point on your old ski um, poles, or they make poles just for walking. That's a whole nother class. Anyhow, how do you feel right now on our scale of one to 10? Is there, are you two or three yet? If not, let's see what we can do about getting closer to that target zone of four to seven. Shall we? You can do our letter patterns in your chair, sitting tall towards the edge of your chair. Let's start with our right foot slow. March, march. Those of you who want to, who know you're gonna be on your feet, take your time, get up mindfully. Maybe come on over to the right side of your chair where you can see and hold it. And we're gonna start with that V pattern. Out, out, in, in. We're always going to lead with our right, at least for right now. Best posture. Are you ready to go to tempo? Out, out, in, in. You can make a lowercase v with your arms. You can hold on to your chair if you're standing. You can go all out if nothing's hurting. Try things gradually. Listen to your body. When we go faster though, it's going to be hard, so keep your hands in for, at first and decide if your feet and the rest of you is fine going faster before you add any arms. Are you almost ready to go faster? Let's try it. Out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in, forward. Holding onto your chair. Fast as you can, crazy feet. Well, that was a little bit easy for me. Keep marching, keep breathing. Ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, I'm gonna to transition to my feet. How are you doing? Now, if you're up close to an eight, you could sit down and keep moving. We're gonna do the same pattern, only on the left side, or to beginning seated with our left foot. Slow march, left, right, best posture. Good, then here's our V-step. Make sure you can see and touch your chair at all times. Okay, if you want, you can add your arms. It's up to you. We're using same side. We're gonna do one more slow, and then we'll try it at tempo, ready? Out, out, in, in. V-step pattern. Remember, if your arms are uncomfortable, you can bring it in a little bit smaller range of motion. You can hold your chair with one hand and use the other, or you could just keep both hands down and swing them like cross crawl. Everything's great. Now, we're ready to go up to high gear. If you're ready, here we go. Up, out, 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 in, in. Out, out, in, in. If you want, you can add those arms again. <laughs> that makes it harder coordination wise and it also adds a little intensity how are you doing with that intensity can you shout out an adjective awesome oh great let's take a little break get a breath <sighs> come on back over to the right side and we're going to go from a v to the letter x so we're just simply going to add a bottom half to that foot pattern. Let's start out just marching right and left slow. Are you in a good space where you can see and touch your chair? I hope so. While you're doing that, I better check my music. I meant to do this before we got started, but we're doing fine. All right. Yes, we are. Good. Let's go into our letter X. Ready? Here's that out, up top, middle, now back, down low. Do it again. Here it is with arms. We're describing the letter X. 
with our feet and if you wish your arms one more time slow don't wander away from your chair it's your dance partner it's your home base ready at tempo out out in in back out in in front out back out are you getting it use the arms if you like x marks the spot you could continue going at this speed, but when we go to a higher tempo, if you choose, you might find it easy to get the feet going first before you decide to try to add the arms. Are you ready? Let's go fast to the feet. Out, 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 in, in. Arms if you like. I'm actually touching my midsection. And then my, well, I got out of whack with my arms. How did you do with your arms? If you wanted, you could go up, up, touch your abdomen, down, down, so that your belly button is the middle of your letter X. Should we try it over here on the left side? If you're seated, leading slow march, left foot, left, right, best posture. Good, able to talk? Excellent. If not, slow it down or sit down. And just a few seconds of breathing mindfully, you'll be ready to do it again. X, out, up, in, in, now back, back. Good. Slow again with arms if you like. Now, if you like, we can go at tempo. Ready? Here we go. Left, left, right, left, right. So this is a letter X pattern. We're stepping every time, leading with the left. Let's do one more letter X at tempo, and then if you choose, ready to go fast, feet out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in, forward, forward, back, back, little, little, pumping those arms, or if you like, out, 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 out. Out, out. This is hard. I don't know what to say, but I'm just concentrating and getting my body parts coordinated. <laughs> How about you? Whew. All right. Where are you with your intensity? Do you want to try another pattern? This one's going to be tricky. We're going to make a letter U. We're going to start by moving two steps to the right. And then we're going to lead with the left and go two steps forward. Then we're going to lead with the right and come two steps back. Now to the left, two steps. Now with the right, two steps. We're making like a goal poster, a letter U. Now back. We're going to go slow. To your right, right together, right together, left together, forward, left together. Now right together right together one more time in our letter u this is a step touch pattern now when we get back we're going to go a little bit faster ready two steps to the right forward left back right to your left forward with your right back with your left over you can make it small and always stay within touch of your chair. We're gonna go slow all the way around one more time. So think of it as a letter U or a goal post pattern. Step, touch, step, touch, step, touch. Ready, let's try it faster. Step, touch, step, touch. Ooh. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's hard. This is a new pattern. If you don't get it, don't worry, just fake it. It's kind of like tap dancing. That's hard for me. How are you doing? Was that challenging? I hope it's a little challenging, but not too much. You get to decide how hard you want to work. But good news, we're going to shift the focus from one of heart health, any, any activity is good for your heart, 
to one of muscular strength work. So we're gonna transition to the front of our chair, but before we do, let's get our breathing under control and do one little bit of balance work. Perhaps over here on the left side of your work, of your chair. See how it feels to stand in your neutral stance, feet just about under your hips. Come up to your tippy toes. You can reach with one arm or not, but keep one hand really close to your chair. If that was easy, put your feet together and come up to your tippy toes. As high as you can get. Pull your navel in. Good, if that was easy. Take your left foot slightly ahead of your right. Come up to your tippy toes, see if you can balance. That was easy. See if you can lift your rear leg ever so slightly, shifting your weight onto that front leg. How did that feel? Let's shift the right leg in front of the left and come up to our toes in this staggered stance. If you feel confident and you're sidled up to your chair, see if you can shift your weight into that front foot, the right foot, and ever so lightly Reach back with that left. That was a little bit of balance and calf strengthening while our breathing and heart rate came down a little. We're going to transition to our chair, so come around to the front of it. If you're not already there, touch the chair physically with your lower legs and heels. This puts our feet in a nice hip width pattern and our, our butt close enough to the chair should we you know, lose our balance that we don't fall on the floor. But first, let's do a few squats because that is the best body weight strength exercise. It encourages full range of motion through your hips and your knees and your ankles. It strengthens the feet even. If you could just do a small range of motion, good. Do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then get seated. Take a moment to slow down. Brace with your abdominals and step to the side, lean to the side, get a little sip of water. I forgot to tell you, but always when we're exercising, it's good to have a non-breakable um, water container for your hydration. And it's also good for your teeth. Not that. If we do it when we're seated, we're less likely to chip a tooth because that's a bad day, huh? <laughs> All right, we are going to use our band first. If you don't have a band, do not worry. We will use our body weight and, and just some good common sense to get us stronger in our core and our upper body. What we're gonna do is situate our hips near the front edge of the chair. Hold the tubing, or if you have a flat band, just grab it from the ends. With your knees stacked over your ankles, step both feet on there so that you've got about equal length of band on either side. Go ahead and pass the band, the handles, to the opposite hand so you have a letter X. The band is crossed in between your shins. We're going to sit tall, and we're just going to take our left hand first today. So we can always go right hand first. We're gonna rest our, our uh, right hand on our lap, perhaps um, grab down closer to get a little more resistance if you like. It depends on the length of your band, but we're gonna do a one arm row across the body. So don't go down to where there's slop or slack in your tube. Just use the range of motion where you're coming up and it's getting tight. If you find that other band is in the way, bring it back. You should start somewhere with the hand close to the knee, thereabouts, and tension on the tube, and then the hand close to the shoulder joint. Don't get it out too far away from your shoulder. Now, if you want, pull your navel in and look back over that left shoulder, strengthening the upper back, rear shoulders, bicep, and a little bit of our obliques as we rotate. Good. If you want, you can add a little bit of a leg extension to make that harder. 
just sliding the heel forward, adding some resistance. And remember to rotate. I forgot. <laughs> just a couple more. Ooh, if you laugh while you do this, it definitely increases your abdominals. All right, now let's give that movement a rest and do the other side. So you might have to switch and have that band in the right hand on in front of the left. This time we're gonna do our one arm row from the right hand reaching diagonally across to the left knee and then up toward that right shoulder. Go slow at first, adjust as you need. If you have good strength and your band is long, you might want to pull a little closer to the, to the, um, grab it closer to your foot. Rotate, pulling that navel in. And if you wanted to make it even harder, you could extend that left leg Sliding the heel close to the ground. Adding more resistance for that right upper back, rear shoulder, and bicep movement. One arm rows with a little leg extension and abdominal rotation. Breathe. I'm gonna finish off with two more. This is a big all body exercise. You can always stop when you need to. Okay, let's try something else. Getting, taking the band um, and getting it uncrossed. Take your left hand, make the letter L in front of your nose, and grab the tube so that the band's on the front of your wrist. Rack it near your heart. We're going to push up towards an imaginary shelf that's rather low. That felt good, we're gonna push a little higher. This is hard, it's a shoulder press. I have a pretty strong tubing I'm using today. Do your best. If your shoulder fatigues and you wanted, you could just keep that arm close to the heart and then lean back, looking over that left shoulder and then come up with a little rotation and an abdominal slide. You could put it together with your shoulder press, but this is hard. And the shoulders, the fronts of them, and the triceps are a little bit smaller and not quite as big and as strong as the rear upper back. So we're gonna give one more best shot and then we'll switch to the other side. A couple of things you could do if you wanted, you could put your feet closer and try it that way. But remember, hold that right hand up like letter L in front of your nose, or a backwards L. Rack it close to your heart. Tube is on the inside of the forearm. Keep the wrist straight. Brace as you push on a diagonal. This is called a cross chop. A little higher if it feels good to you today. Nothing's sharp, sudden shooting pains. Good, add a little rotation. Follow that with your eyes. Follow your right arm. Look at your right wrist and tell it with your eyes to be straight. If your shoulder fatigues, you could just lean back, look over that right shoulder and up and off into the distance, describing a little bit of a diagonal. Diagonal cross chop. Ooh, this is hard. How about your best one or two more? Ooh, that was hard. Okay, one more exercise. Crisscross your tube. Put your palms up. Draw your elbows in. Sit right at the edge of your chair. Paste your elbows to your body and bicep curl. Just in your range of motion, where there's some tension. If you go down too far, it's there's slack and you're not doing any work. Now, if you like, you can add a little right leg hamstring curl. We're working the biceps in the leg and the biceps in the arms. Good. At least I hope it's good. 
Now you could just do the arms. You could also just do the legs. You could do both. And then once you've done your best, you could do neither. <laughs> Make sure you release the tension on your tube. We're done with that for now. So you can hang it up or just get it all the way out of the way somewhere. And do take a moment to step to the side, brace with your arm and your abdominals before you get a little sip of water. Here's to your heart health and your best smile. Okay, we're gonna continue to strengthen our heart with that other pattern. I'm gonna demonstrate it in the chair first. Uh, but remember, those of you who feel confident, you wanna be on your feet, this is a good time to transition. Let's start over here on the left side. If you're standing, make sure you've got a safe, clear space. You can see and touch your chair. And we're gonna do single, single, double with our knee lifts. Double, single, single, double. You can move the opposite arm. If on that double, when you're balancing, you need to grab your chair, do it. Or just keep your finger just ever so slightly like a millimeter space between your fingertip and the chair. Confidence and muscular strength are the better part of balance. Another part of it is having good VOR skills. V for vestibular, that's your inner ear. Sometimes we have problems with that. O is for oculo, that's our vision. And R is a reflex. But the other thing that's not included in there is we have these little cells called proprioceptive cells all around our body, very much in um, higher density in joints and in no joint more so than the ankle. So ankles are really important. Your legs are probably getting a little tired. So let's take a break, just march it out and take it behind our chair. I'm gonna transition. And this time we'll use the, we were using the fronts of our legs. This time, get a hip width or so stance, whether you're seated or, or standing, and draw your heels back, single, single, double. Single, single, hamstring curls. Really recruit a lot more of the rear muscles in the leg and the hips, especially if you dorsiflex your foot. And if you keep your knee down, instead of pulling it up, you might hit your chair with it if you pull it up anyhow. Do your best. You got your chair if you need for a balance check on those doubles. Single, single, double. Now, remember earlier during the warm up, I told you we'd be thinking of things that come in fours. We're gonna use those, but not yet. First, we're gonna change our pattern from a single, single, double to a double, double. Double, double, then four, three, two. Ooh, I needed my chair. Double, double, then four, three, two. Your list of things that come in fours will happen out loud on these fours. North, south, east, west. Double, double, do you have a list? I can't hear you. Let's try it again. Double, double, summer, spring, winter, fall. Double, double, hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs. Do you have another pattern? Let me hear it. Good, one more time, double, double. Let's see, Peter, John, not Peter, those beetles. <laughs> How are you doing? Shake it out. How are you on our scale from one to 10? Hopefully you got at least to a four. If not, we're gonna do it again. And there's some cumulative effect on your cardiovascular strength, that is your heart. Come on over to the right side. If you're in your chair, you're good. If you need to go to your chair, you're also good. All right, we're gonna do those knees again. This time, when we get to fours, we're gonna add some movements. Think circles out away from the 
Center line of the body, and then toward, and then figure eights. Ooh. So we're gonna start right out with double, double fours. Here we go. Double best posture. Double, able to touch your chair. Four, three, two, one. Double, double, four. Straight up and down. Now next time on the fours, let's try adding a circle away from the midline of the body. Keep it tight. In the core, double, straight up and down on the doubles. Now away from the midline of the body. Careful of your chair. Good. Double. This time toward the midline. Toward the midline. I'm going to draw a circle with my hand. It helps me. Double. Straight up and down. Double. Toward the midline of the body. Ooh, that's hard. Double. This time we're going to do a figure eight. Don't worry. Breathing. Double. Straight up and down. Double. Figure eight. You can trace it with your arm as well. Double. Let's do those figure eights again. That's kind of new. We've never done that. Double. Double. Figure eight. Good. Shake a leg. You might have felt that a little bit on the hip flexors. They tend to get a little tight. We're going to do our double, double fours one more time. Behind our chair, this time strengthening our hips with a straighter leg than when we did the hamstring curl. Starting in our nice hip width or so squat, mini squat. Let's just do double, double, and just straight up four, three. Best posture, stretch the crown of your head, double, double. Fours here, three, two. Let's add a little circle, any way you like, on these fours. A tiny circle in the air with your hip and your opposite arm, if you like. Straight up and down with the doubles. Straight up and down. Then little circles. Pull the navel in. You got this. Double. This is hard. Double. When the leg is longer, it's harder because we're moving more weight. Well, it's the same amount of weight, but it's further away from our working muscles. One more set on the right. Four on the right. Four, three, two. Woo! One more set on the left. I can feel this. I got a little bit of a burn, but no sharp, sudden shooting pain. Eee, how about you? Ooh, you want to stretch those hips? That'd be good. We can stretch our hip and balance. If you come on over here to the left side of your chair. Put your weight in that left leg, straighten the knee. You could put that right leg across or not, but just put a tiny bit of weight on the tiptoe and stretch through your side. Mm, good. I hope it's good. And then let's take our time and come on over to the right. Straight right knee, pushing gently into the right hip. It's your choice whether you bring your left leg across or you just keep it there but most of your weight's in your right and you stretch through the right side of the body Woo, good all right time to transition to some strength work once again so one of our best strength exercises is a squat let me make sure we're on target with our music today Excellent. Okay. So when you're doing your squats, let's say, let's pick a number, if, if you feel up to it, somewhere in our target zone of four to eight. Okay. And make sure your lower legs are touching the chair. Make sure your hips are going back and your head stays up and come down nice and slow, as low as you can without sitting. Come up with a little power. So that's one. Two. Do you want to do four? Good for you. If you're done when you did three, sit down. You're doing fine. Do your best and then rest. Four, believe it or not, I lost count. Five, <laughs> that's, that's a common tactic with exercise instructors to get one more extra. And whenever you're ready, perhaps you already are, come to your chair, 
Make sure you step to the side, lean to the side, bracing with your arm and your abdominals while you get a sip of water. Drinking good old plain water is, is one really great thing we can do for our teeth. If our teeth get dry, uh, it's harder to keep them clean. And um, so dry mouth is a big, a big side effect of some medications. Uh, talk to your doctor about that. Maybe there are things you can do. But drinking plenty of good, clean water is great for your teeth. All right, we're gonna use our ball now to do a lot of core work with an option at the end to be on our feet again, should you choose, but it won't be aerobic. It'll be about balance, balance, and more balance. And the best, the biggest part of the balance will be strength. So, a lot of times you've heard the story of someone falls, breaks a hip, ends up in a nursing home, and really never ever gets back to independent living. Nobody wants that. But did the fall come from losing their balance, or did it come, did their hip break from um, osteoporosis? Either way it goes, doing regular strength training will lower your risk of, of breaking a hip and it'll lower your risk of falling and breaking a hip. So strength work is good for a number of reasons. It's also good for your brain health. Our bodies can produce a hormone that helps our brain to be as functionally and cognitively as nimble as possible. So let's do it. You get what you put into this. If you don't have a ball, just use your body weight and your mind to create tension. We're gonna do um, sitting at the edge of our chair. We're gonna do a little abdominal slide. Feet a little bit ahead of our knees rather than just underneath. And brace with your abdominals. Bump yourself in the belly with that ball. Squeeze the ball if you want with your hands. As you breathe and brace never hold your breath now keep the belly tight the abdominal muscles tight tuck your tailbone under lean back bringing the ball close to your heart and then sit up with just a little ways good now we're going to tap the ball to our right knee tap the ball to our left knee keeping that belly tight pulling the navel in as if we're zipping up our tightest trousers. If you want, you can make that movement bigger. Tuck the chin as if you're holding a juicy, juicy pear. You don't want it to drip down your front side. <laughs> and we're strengthening the abdominals. The grip strength, if you want, squeezing each time we bring our hands to our knee. Good. If your thumb has a lot of arthritis, you can just squeeze with the four fingers against the resistance of the rubber ball to towards you, the heel of your hand, or you can add your thumb if your thumbs are feeling fine. Woof, I've got about one more each side. If you make this motion big, it's a lot harder. Woof, all right. We're gonna do another exercise, this time with the ball behind us to strengthen the opposing muscles the hips and the lower back. So scooching back, place that ball carefully somewhere near the mid back region. Scooch back and perhaps touch your heels to the front legs of your chair or some place where you've got a wide yet stable base to dig your heels in, tighten up your hips, tighten up your gluteals, that's your butt. Hold on to your seat. Don't let the chair legs come off of the floor. Pull the navel in and push back. Good. Okay, if you're digging your heels in, pull your toes up as you squeeze into that ball. If you want, you can pull underneath the edge of your seat. Perhaps it's got a sharp or uncomfortable edge, so you don't have to do that. Well, let's add a little row. You can let go and squeeze your elbows back. 
Try to squeeze that juicy pear we had earlier. Squeeze it between your shoulder blades. Tighten up your hips, dig your heels in, pull your toes up. Good, and let's finish with a pulse. Squeeze, but breathe in like you're smelling your favorite dish that you're cooking. I know I've been cooking a lot. <laughs> and exhale as if you're blowing on that first forkful to cool down. All right, excellent. We're gonna do another exercise. So we've been working on mostly the core. We did the front, we did the back. Let's work on the sides. Come into the front edge of your chair. Just put the palm up or towards your body, but don't let the shoulder hunch up. Keep it down. Tuck the ball under your upper arm and give it a good squeeze, drawing the elbows toward the ribs. If everything's feeling fine, exhale and squeeze a little harder. You could put your left hand on your left side and feel those muscles. Pull the navel in and we're going to add a lateral flexion as we squeeze. Good. You might want a wideish face. Keep the navel pulling inward. Keep breathing as you brace and squeeze. We're strengthening the shoulder stabilizer muscles or the rotator cuff to a lesser degree and the obliques. If you wanted more, you could just draw the hand up toward the ear or up toward that upper right where the ceiling meets the wall. Excellent. Let's get the other side. Okay, palm up on the left or palm facing the body. Tuck it under your upper arm. Pull the navel in. Squeeze. Breathe each time. Don't hold your breath. Go at your own pace. Adding that left side lateral flexion, working the right obliques, pulling the navel in, working the rectus abdominis as well. And of course, we're strengthening that shoulder, keeping it safely in its place. If you fell and your shoulder muscles weren't as strong or you didn't tuck and roll, uh, you kept your arms straight, you might knock it out of socket. You want to make it harder? Squeeze a little stronger with that elbow toward the ribs. Lift the other elbow up or stretch to that upper left where the ceiling meets the wall. Woo, good work. All right, that exercise we just did, you've got the option to do it standing and work on your balance. If not, you're gonna repeat it in your chair. And if that doesn't suit you, you're gonna watch while I do it. <laughs> and breathe mindfully or get a sip of water. So if you're transitioning to standing, please situate yourself sort of to the, off to the right and slightly behind so you can see and touch the chair with your peripheral vision and touch it with your left hand. We're gonna just keep that ball, let's, let's tuck it under the right arm. And keep the tension on the ball, straight up and down with the spine. See how it feels to squeeze. Now, Lean to the left, pull the navel in, and stretch that right toe out. Good. This time we're going to pull the knee up as we keep our body in a diagonal. And keep our weight in that left leg as much as possible. Keeping our left hand close to the chair. Pulling that navel in maybe two more times. Just balancing on that left leg. Strengthening that right. I can feel it in my shoulder girdle. Uh, it's working hard. And those muscles keep the, the shoulder from either getting separated or dislocated if you land outstretched. So let's come on the left side of the chair. If you're seated, you're right. But get that ball under the left arm. Palms up or palms toward the bottom. Standing tall, tallest version of your standing or seated self. Draw the elbow in, breathe. 
got that going, if you want, stick with that straight up and down. If not, put your weight in your right foot and take your body to a diagonal and stretch that left leg out. Drawing that left knee in for an oblique knee crunch. Focusing on balance. Shoulder strength. We're working hard in this standing leg as well. You can always tap your toe down or just step out of it if you feel wobbly or you're just done. Well, I'm getting hot. That means a lot of skeletal muscles were working. We are done with our ball. So you can either tuck it here or get rid of it. Stay. Okay. And while we're standing or seated, let's catch our breath. Breathing in mindfully through your nose. Maybe opening our chest. And then exhale and closing. Inhale and open, lifting our heart, lifting our gaze a bit, just as much as is comfortable. And exhale and close, interlacing those fingers, tucking the tailbone under. And then lifting up towards the sky and climb an imaginary rope, stretching through that left side. And the right. Good. All right, we are going to finish off with some mindful breathing, some seated stretches, and a little sip of water. <laughs> Stepping to the side, leaning to the side, which is far better for your back than leaning forward or doing it quickly without the support of your arm or your abdominals. And we'll always try to take at least a couple minutes to do some thoughtful, mindful breathing, relaxation, meditation, call it whatever you will. It's good for your heart, mind, body, and soul. Okay, so coming, let's see, let's scooch all the way back in our chair so that our spine is supported and just take a couple maybe three to five mindful breaths, breathing in through your nose as best as you're able, and out through a relaxed, slightly pursed lips as if you're blowing out a little candle making a wish. You can lower your gaze, rest your hands in your lap, take the weight off your shoulders, and close your eyes and just relax. Do your best to fill your lungs like a Big pink balloons from the bottom to the top as you inhale. And as you exhale, relax and release and the lungs will deflate from the top to the bottom quite naturally. Do it again at your own pace. your time and if you will place your hand near your heart and see if you can feel as you breathe see if you can feel your heartbeat with just three to five mindful breaths and practice we can bring our heart rate down consciously um, and we can do the same with our breathing rate and studies have shown if we learn to do this and we practice for perhaps at three to five minutes on a daily basis our lung recruitment gets better our stress levels tend to get better there's no guarantees but it could do no harm and it can feel great so i highly recommend just a practice of mindful breathing. You can go to your happy place while you do it. You can meditate or pray or uh, count your breath cycle. Anything that works for you 
is great. And every once in a while, change it up and try something new. All right, now we're going to breathe mindfully, inhaling through the nose, scooching to the front edge of our chair, stretching that right leg out, exhaling through the mouth or the nose. If your head stopped up, as you exhale, lengthen your tailbone back, and you can just breathe through your mouth. There's nothing wrong with that. But do rest your right arm down, and as you inhale, lengthen your spine from the tailbone to a long diagonal with the crown of the head stretching up, up, up towards where the ceiling meets the wall in front of you, and dorsiflex your toes closer to your nose. If your hand is touching your knee, that's great. Shin, fine, ankle, wonderful. If you can grab your toes, you don't get extra points. But dorsiflexing your foot helps develop this hamstring and calf and spine stretch. Good. Let's take that right leg and try our figure four stretch. Crossing at the ankles, right in front of the left, outside of the knee, drifting down. Or those who can, with no discomfort, stack their right ankle on top of the left thigh. And that's where you're at as you hinge forward with your exhale. And just gently coax the outside of that right knee toward the floor. Inhale, stretching again the crown of our head up and out towards that where the ceiling meets the wall and the tailbone back and down where the ceiling meets the floor. I'm, I'm sorry, that would be the wall. <laughs> Hopefully the ceiling of your house isn't meeting the floor. Ooh, that's a good stretch for the external rotator cuff of the hip. Let's try that left hamstring stretch, sitting tall, supporting weight on that right lap, inhaling. Stretching up, exhaling, hinging forward, not so much down, letting that left arm rest somewhere on the leg. Stretching your tailbone back and the crown of the head up. Dorsiflexing the toes closer to your nose. Ah, feels good. Remember, if anything hurts, you can substitute your own favorite stretch. Sitting tall. We'll try that figure four stretch, crossing left ankle in front of the right shin, letting the outside of the left knee drift down. Or if you're flexible and it suits you fine, you could cross it, stacking that on top of the other lap and hinging forward. And just gently encouraging the outside of the knee down. We don't ever want to be ballistic or bouncy with our stretches. We may have learned that like, you know, in a phys ed class earlier in grade or middle school or high school or even college. But we know now that that just can do more harm than good. So relax and breathe. Exhale, sink a little deeper with it if you like and just let the crown of your head bow down, but keep the head above the level of the heart and let maybe wag your head to gently stretch through one side, then the other of your neck. And when you're ready, inhale, sit tall. So glad you are still hanging in there, being safe, sticking with the safety protocols. I encourage you to take care of your heart, not just because it's February and it's Heart Health Month, and take care of your teeth, not just because it's February and it's Dental Health Month. Uh, just like we shouldn't think of, of African American history just because it's February and it's, it's African American History Month. These are things we need to be mindful of all year long, every year of our life. And um, they're all interrelated because we, our heart health, our dental health, and the health of all of our friends and neighbors and community members is so important for everyone's health. So wear a mask, socially distance, get those teeth clean, check out your heart, 
get on that vaccine list. Good luck with that. Talk to your doctor. There's a lot of telehealth and um, stuff you could do at a distance these days. Please take good care. Hang in there and keep it safe and simple.